Welcome back to the Jeremiah show. That was Cameron Wright. Um, he that was his performance on The Voice. He sang the Barbara Streisand song um, so well that he got four chair turns. When those chairs turn like that, and I know they put the, I think they put the, somebody told me once they put the sound effects in afterwards. So I guess it doesn't distract the performance, but it still has got to be distracting, right, Cameron? And uh, yours, all, all four happened so fast. It was like, bam, 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 bam. And yeah. you've got four of these iconic music artists, that, uh, many of whom I'm sure you um, respect and have followed for their careers. And they're all staring at you. It's just crazy. <laughs> so do you know how many, I'm just curious, how many four chair turns there have been in the voice history? Because that's not very, it's not common to have all of them turn like that. You know, that's a really good question that I should probably find out the answer to. But I do know. I don't know. You probably, big, sorry, go ahead. Four chairs because it doesn't happen often. It does not. It's like uh, finding a four-leaf clover or, or something <laughs> even more hard. to. Uh, it's just uh, congratulations is what I'm trying to say <laughs> a long Thanks. way around, man. Congratulations, but well-deserved. Um, so uh, l let's go back. Uh, let's just finish up here before we go into uh, your journey to The Voice. So your mother, uh, we talked about in the first segment, she trained you. Um musically vocally you you spent many sounds like really amazing hours with her learning your craft is there a way to describe what she taught you musically without you know having to give examples is there are there some things that really uh set you ahead um and and gave you a, a good footing vocally that Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what did you say? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, a, I guess, I don't know if you can even put the musically what you've learned into, um, into descriptions, but I guess I'm just curious to some of those lessons that, uh, that you were taught by her. She said, she's such a professional herself. Yes. Um, I guess the best example that I could give. Um, of course, my mom being the foundation of my sound, she, yeah. I my gift from her. So there's a lot of innate similarities and obviously inspiration that is direct because it's my mom, but also growing up in church. <laughs> I mm -hmm. always tell people that the greatest training in the world is the Pentecostal church <laughs> there. When you go to the church, I, it, it's almost like we're spoiled. I can go see musicians who have studied jazz at the most revered institutions, classical music at the most, by the, and we're trained by the most revered teachers and the feeling that, people get and you know it, it's like yeah you know I got that every Sunday <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it doesn't take anything away from their genius because they're also immensely gifted but literally yeah. I grew up around the, ch the church when you the, the Hammond B3 organ singers that <laughs> I literally, they will take your breath away. I mean, and as mm -hmm. we know, a lot of the greatest singers ever are from the church, from Aretha Franklin, yeah. Whitney Houston to Mariah Carey. They grew up with that background. And that is so funny. We're spoiled. It's just like, okay, I know that that knocked your socks off, but we hear her every Sunday. <laughs> so that environment, um, growing up in an environment where it wasn't competitive, but it was like sharpening the gift um mm. it, it 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 made me practice um even when i didn't realize i was practicing doing church solos being around um people who, of that caliber uh so all of that kind of was a part of the lessons that i was in here that i was getting um as i was developing as a singer as a young adult as, you know that is the the, the true core of of anything that I do. I 
always credit the church and am grateful for that experience because it, it, it is the best. And the things that she taught you about being uh, a good person, um, about navigating life, it sounds like you have a really good foundation in your family where you had examples of that. And do you think that will that gives you um, a head start at just the ups and downs of life and especially in the music business? What are some of those things that, that you use um, that work for you? Yeah, I definitely have a lot of beautiful morals that were instilled in me from my, my mother and especially my grandmothers. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm very close to both of my grandmothers, my dad's mom and my mom's mom. And I feel like, honestly, I feel like them sometimes. Sometimes I'll do stuff or say stuff and it sounds much older than I am. And I was like, that that's grandma. Um, and I feel like people see that in me. Um, even Michael Ruble said on the show when they first met me, he said, that you have a light that shines that comes out of you and that can't be bought to forget. Yeah. We'll get to the voice part, but there's a presence. And I honestly believe that is because of the foundation that, you know, the, the morals and uh, that my grandmother and my mother gave me making sure that I moved with integrity, that I was honest. And although sometimes in life, I have to say this, it, can be frustrating for you know all the little nicey nice folks seeing you know there, there's so much chaos in the world that we live in and it seems like a lot of times the bad guys get ahead but i promise you it will pay off to to just move with kindness and love well said that's like it's beautiful yeah, well said and grandmothers and mothers, I think they deserve a lot more credit than they get. And and uh, we, I love that you said some nice things about them because uh, th thank you, grandmothers, to your grandmothers and, and your mother, Tanya. What's your grandmother's name, your two grandmothers' names? Yeah, so Grandma Lola, that is my dad's mom. Oh, we can talk about them for hours. And Grandma Jean is my mom's mother. Okay. Thank you. Let's a uh, little tribute to them, little tip of the hat. And uh, thank you so much for, for uh, what they've done to inspire you. I, we really appreciate it. I know here as, uh, as listeners of your music and, and just talking with you right now, Cameron, um, what are some of the things that you're interested in writing about and that you're exploring right now through your writing? You know, I have a very, um, particular way of songwriting um i am the type of person who moves solely off of inspiration um there are people i'm sure stevie wonder just just such a genius who can sit down and say i want to write a song today about heartbreak and he'll just <laughs> sit there and write an amazing song about heartbreak however for me i always hate whatever comes out of that when I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm going to do this. Every single time I've ever written a song is because <laughs> I've been walking down the street or at a store and something literally came to me immediately, a melody, a lyric, something. And I'm pulling my phone out, trying to get it down so I don't forget. Um, and that's how I write. So I never know when inspiration is going to strike. So if you ever see me out whispering to my phone, it's probably because I just received a download from, from the higher power that will eventually be on all platforms. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. What do you think if you, when you look back, you know, you're, you've got a long ways to go and a lot of great music to put out there, but What's your catalog going to look like? What's the overall theme that you like to explore uh, through the music? What do you think like will shine and stand out if we look back 20 years from now at, at everything that you've produced and created? What's the overall theme of, uh, of, of who you are? What, what are you expressing through your music? Authenticity. <laughs> so I feel like um, I can't really pinpoint or define my sound in one way, especially because I have so many 
I'm passionate about so many genres. My grandmother sung jazz. I grew up in church. I sing r and As you can see on the show, I started off with Barbara Streisand. But I feel like the one thing that will be a consistent throughout people experiencing my gift is authenticity. And that is also connected to the soul. So you'll always be able to feel the true me. And that, that I think, is what sets, I don't know if I want to say sets me apart, like I'm special, but it stands out. That's, that, that um, definitely authenticity uh, cannot be faked and it's felt, and especially in music, if nothing else, of anything else in the world, music and authenticity. And those are the artists that we all connect with the most, including yourself, I'm sure. When you, when you know that's authentic, when you, you can feel it, you can, it touches you. So uh, I love that. I love that answer. Okay, let's take one more break here. Uh, we are speaking with, on the Jeremiah Show today, Cameron Wright. He's on Team Blue Blade, season 26, NBC's The Voice. You can follow him and find him on his socials, Cameron Wright with a W, L-A Diva, L-A-D-I-V-A, -A. Uh, La Diva, I should say. The Voice is on Mondays and Tuesdays, 8, 7 Central. You can watch it on NBC or streaming on Peacock. The next day, the coaches this year, Michael Blue Lake, Gwen Stefani is back, Reba McIntyre, and Snoop Dogg. What an amazing lineup. They're looking for the best singers out there and The Voice. Cameron Wright's got The Voice, and his new single is so hot. We're going to play it in its entirety at the end. You want to check it out sooner? search still on spotify or on any of the platforms it's cameron wright and his new single is still coming up in a few here we'll be right back don't go anywhere more with cameron wright nbc's the voice he's in 26